Good morning. We're getting ready today to participate in a virtual court hearing to finalize the guardianship documents for both Jesse and Abigail. Uh, when Joe is, uh, when we're finished with the hearing, it's ready to start pretty soon. But once we're finished with the hearing, Joe and I will sit down and we'll discuss with you guys about guardianship with special needs adults, why it's necessary, and you know, we'll go from there. But um, it's so funny because I started to get up and just like put on my regular, you know, uniform, the jeans, the t-shirt. And then it occurred to me, just because it's a virtual meeting, I mean, we should still respect the court. And so I kind of had to dig deep in the, <laughs> back in the, in the, in the de dregs of my closet to find something. I, this outfit is like 20 years old. We don't, we don't dress up. And so, you know, but I feel like we should be presentable to respect the court. Joe's upstairs right now trying to find a button-down shirt with a collar <laughs> and shaving. And so, you know, you, you start to think that these virtual things, you can just be, you know, really casual and, and you kind of you lose a little bit of the decorum that you would normally have if you just got up and had to go to the court, which we would normally have to do. But we are getting ready to do that and once we're ready, once we're finished, we'll let you guys know how it went. We don't expect any problems and um, we'll see you in a bit. So I see you found something. Well, <laughs> you know, we cleaned out our closet, right? And we've gained weight. And we gave away all of our clothes. That were too small and didn't that fit were us. Too, or too big. Right. Back in the day. Right. And now I officially don't have any long pants that actually fit me. That's right. But thankfully it's, all, <laughs> thankfully it's television, right? It's a Zoom call. What are you going to do if you have to stand up, raise gonna, your right arm? No, I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> I'm not going to stand up. I can do it like this. Okay. We, that's probably fine. all it'll be. But of it's, course it will. This is hilarious. And though, I'm the editor, it? so I can Zoom <laughs> as needed on my Zoom call. But uh, this is crazy. It's crazy to... Um, we should respect the court, honey. It's a Zoom call. Still, we it's a court, court hearing. By, I understand that, but does that... Okay, well, okay, we'll do that. And um, We have gotten really soft this past soft year. Soft in more ways than in one. more ways but than one. I think one. a lot of the economy has. A lot of uh, the way we do yes. things are kind of a little bit uptight and a little too tight. And um, so well, we'll uh, we'll see. You respect the court by your attendance and your and your you know demeanor. Well, and, that uh, there's that too. And, and, and you we don't wear do hats. You don't. You know. You should have a collared shirt. You just there's certain right. things. There you should a take a shower and shave. You know. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go do this. Okay. Let's We're gonna do, go do it. Our court hearing. Let's do it. Okay. I believe I have everybody I need here. Are are either uh, Abigail or Jesse going to be online as well? They are not, Your Honor. It's it's really in their best interest to not participate. That's fine. Uh, I, I've read everything. I've read the Guardian Med Live reports. I believe everything is in order um, for me to enter the orders. I understand that we're we're I'm, on the first page. It says that upon testimony, heard already tennis in open court. I was planning on crossing that out. I wasn't planning on taking testimony. Everything is in order. All right, well, I've signed both orders now and everything uh, is done. And uh, and I'll ask my law clerk uh, later today to send uh, counsel and the parties a copy of the, uh, the two orders appointing co-guardians. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to see everyone. Right. Thank you Thanks very much. Thank you for all your help. Take care. Have a great weekend. You do you the same. Well. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. So that was easy. Yep. And the reason that it was easy is because all of the work had been done already. Yep. So the guardians ad litem that you saw on the screen, there was our attorney, the representative representative from our attorney's office 
and the two guardians ad litem. Right, two guys in the middle. Yes. One guardian ad litem is assigned to each client. And I used to think that a guardian ad litem was an attorney for the kids. Right. But that's not the case. And we just learned that recently. The guardian ad litem is a representative of the court right. to review the, all of the documentation and just make an assessment and a judgment. They come to the house. They they In one case, he took a tour of the house. He met all of the siblings and you know was very very interested in another case it was very straightforward and simple um but they do their due diligence to represent to the judge in their best opinion if they think that this is a the right thing to do right and they make telephone calls to people that we have listed in the order or in the filing that mm -hmm. uh, know us and know the kids. Yes. Now, in this particular case on the court day, it's kind of a little weird because we're doing two at once. Which, right? Because we did Abby and Jesse at the exact yeah. same time. Which is not normal. And yeah, because normally you only have one attorney, mm -hmm. one guardian ad litem, and one judge. But in this case, we had two because we're handling two matters at the exact same and time. And the reason that we did that is because when the girls turned 18, normally you start this process six months before 18th the, birthday. Six the month. 18th mm -hmm. birthday. And in our yeah. case, the reason that we did not do that is because Joe is out of work. Yeah. And this is a very expensive process, thousands of dollars for the attorney fees. And, you know, and it's just a very long process. And that's why mm -hmm. we did not do these girls in the proper time. So it right. took... So one you know, thing too is that when I started work again... Um, our company has a, a legal plan, you know, like a Hyatt legal mm -hmm. plan or Met plan or whatever. A lot of companies have a legal plan. So, um, where you get discounted rates. So I had signed up on the legal plan at work so that I could get quote discounted rates to be able to <laughs> do this process. Well, come to find out, and this is very common uh, across the industry and across the law practice, I guess, is that this is a very specialized area right. of of law and it's called elder law. It's the general mm -hmm. um, category, but most elder law attorneys do work for uh, elderly people, like people coming into the final estate of their, you know, their estate distribution, mm -hmm. wills, trusts, that kind of thing. Falls into that category. And if they do guardianship, they do it for those elderly people and their children. Uh, in other words, Usually. the children mm -hmm. are taking their, you know, their parents and, you know, distributing their affairs and that kind of thing. So very few of the elder law professionals actually work in um, special needs children and them coming of age. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So we ended up having to scrap that plan of using the, the legal plan that we had. Because we just, have a, a good attorney in we our community back. that it pretty much does all, that's all she does. Right. And, and so she was the one we used well for finished. Hannah 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, when we had Hannah's guardianship. Right. Well, it wasn't 20 years ago. It was when Hannah turned 18, 18. so seven mm -hmm. years ago. Seven so what they ago. do, what the guardian of <laughs> item does, they're, they're looking over, they're looking at the kid's most recent IEP, they have all of the doctor, you know, the, the medical doctor, reports. medical reports, all of that. They are looking at psychological evaluations. They're, um, they're, they're looking at all of that. They're looking at, you know, reports from social workers and everything. So these decisions are not taken lightly. And one thing all. we have to do, it's, it's a big one thing that, process. and both of the attorneys did this, is that when they, both the guardian ad litems did this, when they came, their role in the court, according to law, is they have to physically hand yes, they're serving that papers. document of the court and explain that to the person, the client. in this case, mm -hmm. Abby or Jesse, and explain to them what's going on. We should have right? filmed that because that was actually kind of yeah. funny. Jesse so, was sound asleep and Abby was just, you know, she was she was just kind of But there, that's Abby a role stuff. that the they guardian ad litem has to do. And essentially, mm -hmm. they have to testify to the court that they actually presented those papers and explained and were available to make any kind of 
um, comments. Yes, you know, and in the court requests. documents, there's um, a paragraph in each one of their um, proceedings that goes into detail about their impression and, and how the client responded or that in Jesse's case, they didn't respond at all. And, you know, whether they felt that they understood anything that they said or, you know, or whatever. But um, but it's a necessary thing. So why why guardianship? Why would we go through this expense, go through the process, why would we obtain guardianship? Okay, well, two reasons. I mean, there are two, two. there's a positive reason. Yes. And then there are negative reasons. Negative, well, negative, there's, if you don't do it, there's Oh, downfall, there's right? definitely. So from a positive point of view, guardianship allows the guardian, in our case, us. The court-appointed guardian. The court-appointed mm -hmm. guardian to make decisions and sign and enter contracts on behalf of that person. Make medical decisions, right. educational decisions. Open bank accounts. Finances, all um, of that. Update IDs. Like we had, mm -hmm. a we had uh, the kids got IDs last year. And so one of the documents would be the, the guardianship document. It's administrative, mostly. Yeah. But someone has to. You so know. somebody has to be able to sign for someone, and if they're I mean, eighteen Jesse, and know. they don't have guard, eighteen or older, and don't have guardianship, mm -hmm. they are in the eyes of the law Legal. able to sign contracts. They could buy a condominium or a timeshare mm -hmm. or an RV or or, a, or take out a loan. Or this is the bigger the bigger issue: the vulnerability is is pretty intense. And just imagine for a moment if, say, you know, the girls ran off and were taken advantage of and someone married them, there would be absolutely nothing we could do to intervene with right. that outside of guardianship. Right. Now, you know, and the same is true, supposing they go and they get, maybe they get duped into buying a car. Or signing right. a contract, you know, and they and somebody says sign here, and or it's sign for over someone their else to someone else, you know. And see, these contracts can be made null and void if something, or if they get in trouble with the law, you know. And so, and so now, in the eyes of the court, this is a vulnerable individual who is incapable. Basically, they've been deemed to be incapacitated. Right. incapable of making these kind of adult decisions. Therefore, marriages could be annulled. Contracts can be voided. It's it's a process still, but it's much easier. And for example, if your kid goes missing, okay, for God forbid, you know, and you call the police and you explain to them, my child is missing. Oh, my 20-year-old child is missing. Yep, they they're going to do, do nothing. That's right. However, if they have guardianship, they're going to treat the individual as a child. And right. it will be elevated, you know, and, and more will be done. But but these are these are protective things. And so does guardianship take away the rights of the individual? It does. And in it does. In some doesn't. cases. Yes and no. Yeah. And specifically, mm -hmm. there are rights, and, and these are for individual cases, right? Some some um some of the some of the people who get guardi who have guardians uh can retain some of these rights yes. depending on their level. So uh in most cases they're they are not allowed to uh, go pu purchase a firearm. Right. They're the, the big common sense issues yeah. that they go through. Mm -hmm. Owning a firearm, right. voting, driving a car, and getting married. Yeah. Those are those are the four rights. And, you and know. Those are explicitly identified mm -hmm. in the order that this, per that this person is not going to have those rights. Now, obviously, in our case, the driving the vehicle and owning the firearm are two, you know, <laughs> our kids are blind. Yeah. Now, now I say that, now I'm going to have to say something else because mm -hmm. because blind people can own firearms. Yeah, and they certainly there's, can vote. And they do, and there's... Blindness in itself is not a correct. reason to, be ha to have a guardian. The correct. We, 100%. we will not be guardians for David. Yeah. This has more to do with the intellectual ability, the developmental, you know, the, the cognitive um, impairment. And now in Bethany and, and um, Hannah, rather, now we do have guardianship of both Bethany and Hannah. And you might say, 
oh, but they're so smart and they're so articulate and they're working. Yes, those things are all true. However, both girls have had extensive psychological evaluations. They have, you know, their IEPs are, are reflective of their, you know, their ability, you know, their intellectual ability, their reasoning, their logic. We need to have guardianship of these two young ladies. Now, in their case, supposing they want to get married, they can get married, you know, and, and we're here as kind of a safeguard again, so that we're, we've got their backs. We're assessing, I mean, we take this whole, you know, this parenting, you know, meeting the kid at the door with a shotgun to a whole new level, I suppose, <laughs> you know, because yeah. they're not really able to make those kind of adult decisions in a well thought out way. They're not yeah. able to do that. However, yeah. both of them, Hannah and Bethany, have retained their right to vote. To vote. But Abby and Jesse, we did not. Of course allow, not. I mean, that's that. so common sense. Those are the levels of abilities that yes. are being expressed there. Yes. So, so you know, but these things, even the marriage thing. Now, supposing the girls meet a man, and you know, one expresses interest and one doesn't. That might make another video. And you know, some of these topics we don't we don't discuss things that might be an embarrassment to the kids. You know, if at some point they want to do that, well, we'll have to we'll have to readdress that. But in one one of them is interested and one of them is not. And so if if they were to meet the right guy, mm -hmm. you know, and if they were to decide to get married and, you know, and we felt that that was a good union and the other family agreed with that. And we can go back to the core and remove that restriction. Or this, remove the whole guardianship. We can remove the whole if guardianship. If, she's going to, if one of them is going to be mm -hmm. married and they're going to be in a union and they have a spouse that can operate in that mode, now, we may... Just remove our guardianship altogether. Potentially. And, but, now there are cases. <laughs> there, there. Well, okay, no. We'll see. This is serious I now know, because right? there are cases of people within our community that that are married, and and oftentimes they marry within the community, yep. and it may be a situation where they still need to retain guardianship. Right. Someone needs to kind of help them out with right. their, you know, their Finances adult decisions, their, home buying, right. that sort of thing, and so they're just it's safeguards, really, right. more than anything. We're watching out right. for our Guard, loved ones. They're, they're called guard, guardian. They're called guardian. guardrails, exactly. It's called guardianship for a reason. And, you know, so we we have um, guardianship of these kids. We will not have guardianship of David. He's well able. Well, this is up for debate, but he's well able to make... As any other you know, college He's age 21 years kid. old, you know, but David is... He's going to be, you know, perfectly fine and well able to make his decisions. We will not be... Um, we will not be going to the court to get guardianship of him. We will of Obed. So we will have guardianship of the five. And then Joel has been named as the alternative um, guardian. It doesn't necessarily mean that he, he has to be involved with the day-to-day -day care and all of that. And his role would be more administrative, oversight. There are other avenues within the community through our like community services board, the kids, um, the four that have you know, we'll have guardianship, the five that will have guardianship. They all either have a Medicaid waiver or the, the three, Abby, Bethany, and Hannah are on the waiting list. But we always, every year, and we just had this for Hannah, their case managers, who is a, a social worker within the county, they come and they, they reassess everything every year to determine where their position is on that waiting list. And while we're able and capable of taking care of them, they they can stay on the waiting list. That's not a problem. But if, God forbid, something were to happen to us, someone else would step in and, and help take care of them so, with Joel as, you know, the guardian. So it brings up another, a couple of other good questions. It's and very uh, complicated. Answers <laughs> is that what happens when we're not able to mm -hmm. perform as guardians? Yes. Right? So well, that, that day, may happen. That, that day may will happen, happen at I mean, some point. So um, through this process and through either, 
you know, conversations with our social workers and through our uh, attorneys and that kind of thing. There are special needs trusts and other types mm -hmm. of planning mm -hmm. that has to be done as they get older and as we get older. But there comes a point where it may require an organization, a nonprofit organization can step in and provide that. that guardianship. So in our community, we have the ARC the ARC, usually there's an ARC or Every, something like that. There's everyone, every um, community has an ARC. There's a lot of uh, uh, Jewish foundations, there's mm -hmm. Catholic foundations, and others that provide. And most of these are available on your uh, aging websites of your mm -hmm. community. They'll let you know where, where legal and guardianship help is. So there's two parts of that. One is the legal aspect mm -hmm. of setting those kind of things up for someone who can't afford it on their own, and that's through legal services mm -hmm. or some other nonprofit legal fund. And then the second part of that is who can actually be a guardian for someone who is likely a stranger. You know, the, the reality is a lot of um, these people don't have any family at all. For, right. And, you know, and, and you can't always expect that someone from your extended family right, will step in will and, step save in and, the day. and do what we do every right. day. Especially That's if they haven't realistic. done it for 20, 30, or 40 years. No. And I've seen situations <laughs> too. I have seen and heard of situations where the worst thing happened and the person who was named to take over backed out. So, you know, what happens in those situations? And so fortunately, you know, the community is... the. The system, with all of its flaws and issues and everything else, it, it is a pretty good system at its core. Within a community, there should be other people who are who are there and other systems and other things that are in place to care for people who cannot right. care for themselves. And they're not the government. The county or the state well, kind of is not typically doing these services. They supervise the services, but they're typically well, that's non, true. They're nonprofits that are the Council on Aging or ARC of Northern Virginia or ARC of whatever it is. So these organizations provide through a charitable situation and volunteers. They will find people, someone. They work yes. with this community mm -hmm. so that you don't have to be a ward of the state. That's the whole yes. idea is that you're trying to avoid that individual right. just being put off to a, a nursing as, home or right, something as a ward of a state with right. no one advocating right. for their needs and wants and desires. That's the and very rights. worst case scenario. Yeah. And every month we are meeting with Jesse and Abby's case manager. This is the same person that has both of them. They know very well what our wishes are. Yep. And, you know, and these things are documented every month. And, you know, they're always, just like they do with the IEPs at school, with education, they're always looking at the least restrictive environment. Right. And right. in the case of our family, since there are so many of them, um, the least restrictive environment is for them to stay in their home with oversight, with yep. with caregivers and oversight. So, right. and they so know that's our desire as well. It, it is strongly our right. desire, and you know, and one of the and we have a legal right to enforce we, that because of the right guardianship. because of the guardianship, and so it's a necessary thing. I don't know if there's anything else that you think we should add. You guys put your questions if you have additional questions or comments about guardianship. I know it's a little controversial actually, but I think most of it is because people really don't understand the purpose. They don't understand all the nuances and the and the safeguards and, and everything that is in place. Um, for these individuals. But if you have questions, comments, concerns about it or whatever, please put those in the comment um, the comments below and we can address it in another video. So here's one more thing okay. and that I just thought of because when, uh, when we did Bethany's guardianship, we were not financially able to pay it for it ourselves. It was while you were out of work. So when I was yes. out of work, and Bethany and our other kids were part of, they were on Medicaid mm -hmm. so that they were able to have health insurance and have resources that way with a, with a child that's on Medicaid. And if the way it works, I think it most of the time is if the family is receiving some kind of aid, like food stamps or uh, some kind of benefit at all that qualifies for legal, aid. For legal services. Yeah. 
right, uh, provided by a nonprofit. In this case, we were able, because it had to be done, because mm -hmm. Bethany was reaching that age and she needed mm -hmm. to have that done, that we applied for uh, assistance for legal services and, to operate as our attorneys through that process. And, and the other girls very, weren't quite 18 by then. They weren't 18, and yeah. by the time... You know, they turned 18, you we had a job, and we were not yes. eligible anymore <laughs> to get those kind of services. <laughs> you know? So that's a reason, just because you, A, can't afford it, if mm -hmm. your family needs help, yes, and you're getting exactly. some help, even if it's just a benefit from your county or from your state, that usually qualifies you for those legal services, and like Karen or says, or if your income falls below the, yeah. if your if your income is in such a at such a level that you you know you have to look that up and figure that yeah. out. You have to ask. You have you to just ask. go to your legal services page and submit an application and say, "This is mm -hmm. my situation. I really need to have this done, and yes. I can't afford two, three thousand dollars." Don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you because yeah. it's better to have someone tell you. No, you make too much money or <laughs> a dollar uh, too much money, <laughs> or you don't qualify or whatever, but get the mm. paperwork done by somebody. Just don't put it off. Right. And don't right. do it. You're better off doing it. And, and, it, and it, it works in your favor to show that you've taken the steps to do that because yeah. because you're constantly having to show that you're a responsible caregiver. You know, it. see, this is the thing. I mean through adoption and everything else we are so used to this i mean we we are living our lives under a microscope and have for many many years um guardianship is not um does not go along with adoption because there are people who are birth kids who need guardianship as well okay right. but in our particular case you know we just we've just been had this system in our lives for a very long time and so you know there's there's lots and lots of documentation about um the things that we have done along the way it's it's oh my gosh it's it's pretty intense but um but anyway so that's guardianship that's guardianship in and a nutshell. it applies to um you know to a lot of our kids most mm -hmm. of our kids and um, it's something that you should look into. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. we're not providing any kind of legal advice no, here, or anything no, like that. No, no, no. Uh, laws are different in every state. They are. And they are different in every country. So we have a lot of our subscribers are outside and viewers are outside the U.S. Thank you for being here. Uh, this applies typically just to U.S. right at the moment. Yeah, we but know absolutely You probably have about some, some kind of, uh, you know, similar path, you know, in, mm -hmm. uh, in your country. But uh, we thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, um, you know, put in the comments below. But before you do, hit that like and that subscribe button. <laughs> and please share this video with anyone that you think might, you know, need this information. Or just enjoy our channel in general. We love you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.